Welcome back to the 10-7, y'all. 10-7 show, y'all, with Tara Tower Goose and myself. We are back. Had to take a quick break last weekend. Uh, we had some, well, we had the championship game we had to go to. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't involve the Phillies, so, you know, it wasn't nothing like that. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it is what it is. I think I'm used to it. I think I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, well, welcome back to the show, y'all. We appreciate y'all hanging with us again on yet another Sunday on if you haven't seen the Eagles game yet, cover your ears. On a Sunday where the Eagles won, okay, y'all can uncover your ears now. Absolutely. Um, we are we are happy about that. But first and foremost, before we get into the show, I got to ask my people how y'all been. So, y'all, how y'all been? We've been good. Yeah, man, I've been chilling. Yeah, pretty much. Everything's good. There, there was an interesting happening that we were just talking about right before the show. Right? <laughs> I just think it would be interesting to just say something about it on the show. Like, do you want to? You don't have to. So, oh no, please do. What? So what day was that? No, 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 say, no. So Thursday about. night, we just sit and watch the TV, and we hear this thunderous sound. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like fireworks, or maybe even thunder. And it and it was a pause, and it and then it happened again. And I'm like, what? and then the dogs start. Barking. Yeah, then the dogs start barking. I was like, what the hell is going on? So I go to the the door, the driveway door. I open the door and open the screen door and it's two big ass deer in the driveway. Probably like four or five feet from where I was standing in the door. Mm. Fighting. Horns locked. Mm. And, I, and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you was like, oh shit, there's deer right here fighting. And my, yeah. first, my first reaction was, near my car? That was my car. <laughs> yeah. Like, y'all kill each other. Get away from Yo, my car. So I was like, ha, get out of here. And they paused and looked at me and went back to fighting. I said, ha. Then I said, get out of here. <laughs> and they turned the green. I think it was a combination of you chewing them off and the dog barking. Because the dog was at the door, too. Yeah, oh, was, okay. yeah, yo, it was like National Geographic. Nature was nature. Wow. Like, I, I would have loved to see that. Yeah, like, uh, that is my thing. Yeah. You know, the, the, the crazy thing about it is, I was like, you know, hindsight always twenty twenty. You do stuff. Then I was like, well, this. I'm like, well, damn, this screen door all glass. Yeah. Our, our entry door all glass. I was mm -hmm. like, ain't nothing for deer. We see videos of deer busting through store doors mm -hmm. all, glass yeah. all the time. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, I'm not being playing big bad talking about get out of here. <laughs> 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 Yep. But luckily they ran. They're they're more afraid of us. Technically, yeah. You know what I mean? Than anything. So they, they just rolled. Yeah. And then one they left and then one came back. And I was like, then I say get out of here. Oh, yeah. And then he <laughs> ran and, and, and went through on to went through the bushes to the other day. <laughs> my neighbor's side. And I was he like, came wow, back for you. Crazy. Like, hold on, where that boy that was talking all that smack. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'll give you a chance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wild animals. You, Hi, get out of here. But if you act like you want to buck, yeah. I got something. Yeah. <laughs> As they come through that all glass, all glass door. Oh my goodness. Nothing be bucked, huh? Mm -hmm. We had a little animal incident as well. Not not as close as y'all, but we did. there was a bear on the loose. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. The bear was caught not far from us. That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they caught cool. it. Said, I was like, and I'm thinking along your lines, like the door downstairs is glass, and it ain't nothing for a bear or a deer, which frequently we are. Yeah. He just busts in there. Yep. And I'm, and, and I'm like, lock the door. He, Justin, like, wait, the door is glass. No, lock that door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, did you lock that did door? Lock that door? Right. And y'all been here, so y'all, I'm like, that, that, that bear will just sneeze and open it. <laughs> Real simple. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they take door car door. doors off. Yeah, I know, but you know, it's, and I was just thinking, like, wow, like if the animals want to come in here, yeah, you know, when, here. when nature be naturing, I mean, because technically we're in their backyard, so true. right, it's true. All right, so we had some wildlife adventures this yeah. weekend, yep. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I give me a pound so I can have me some deer meat next yeah, time. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We could have. So, so Miguel, Miguel's talking to talk smack on me already. Justin is scared of everything, anything that flies. <laughs> me and too. Buzzer. You got to fly and have a buzz to it. So. Me too. 
Yeah. 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 Dang me, girl. He went, he went metric on it. Check this girl out every Friday night on the uh, Check Swing podcast. Y'all mm-hmm. check him out every Thanks for watching. Every Friday yeah. night. Um, so I guess I guess we're gonna get into the show. We had we had an incident with a squirrel too. Oh my god! So she, I have an incident every day. She had an incident with, with a squirrel. Oh, you're, be, your coworker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This squirrel. That's the home. Crawls up on the roof. He's on our deck and at at, at my office window every morning. And whatever he finds in the in the in the wilderness, he likes to come and eat it. I mean, and be in my window like. <laughs> he like every day. day. We have he comes the yeah. same time. He comes like around. Which, I what like, you don't he know is that, that 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 squirrel been doing that for years. Mm-hmm. Probably. Like he's supposed, he, I'm, I'm supposed to change what I do because <laughs> there's new people here. Oh, make he's nice he's with having breakfast with that's his breakfast. Make nice breakfast. with Listen, I, but he does it like it's oftentimes when I'm in a meeting. Mm. So I'm sitting here. Yeah. Once in a while, I was downstairs and he was on the skylight and it had rained and he was licking the water off the well, he was thirsty. Yeah, but I don't want to hear claws. Oh, I know. That was like a Twilight Zone. Well, movie. you moved to his living room. Like, so. <laughs> yeah, he kind of did. He was here before us. How about? I guess so. Right? Right? He stayed yeah. in the concrete jungle. <laughs> well, look, it's time to get into. Do we have any words you got? Yeah. Okay. I should have asked that earlier, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's time to get into one of y'all favorite parts of the show, and that's the part of the show. Well, y'all know the show. It's this, this part. Yes, it is the Would You Rather segment of the show. Where we ask you, what would you rather do? And uh, can you tell us? And this part of the show is brought to you by Therapeutic Billing. Terry, if you would, please tell us a little something about Therapeutic Billing. I'd love to. Therapeutic Billing is a women-led and minority-owned business. Therapeutic Billing is a full-service medical billing and credentialing company that focuses on individual and small group specialty practices. To contact Therapeutic Billing, the number is 610-228-2029, and the web address is therapeuticbilling.com. Well, there you have it. Would you rather is brought to you also by Tyra? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I have a few. This one I thought was kind of weird and funny at the same time. Would you rather get diarrhea on vacation or the day of a big presentation at work? Hmm. The day of a big presentation at work. Yeah, I'm going to go with that too. Because diarrhea is the best call out reason ever. Ever. True. You tell you tell something, you call your boss like I got diarrhea. They don't want to hear no more. Nope. They're like, oh, 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 that's all right. I got it. Yep. <laughs> yep. They don't even want everybody to. Knows that is that always my right. biggest fear, though, that I'm going to get diarrhea on vacation. Yeah. Somebody on Facebook said on vacation. Um, I, I'd rather not on vacation. You know, I tried that diarrhea thing once before. It wasn't necessarily a call out. That it wasn't a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I ever told y'all this story. I've told Tyra the story. You did? Yeah, you'll you'll know. Um, and I'll make it real quick and just get to the point. I try to use diarrhea as an excuse to stay, get out of trouble in school <laughs> because I didn't return to class and didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. I told her I was in the bathroom. I had diarrhea it didn't work. No. It was study hall, though. Know, study hall? Yeah, exactly. They definitely oh, gonna let that All right, so you I, I had a track meet that day. Oh, okay. And it, it rained. We got excused. We got caught out of the class for the track meet. It was the last period of the day. We got mm-hmm. caught out for the track meet. Then as we were out, the track, the get work track meet was canceled because of the rain. Mm-hmm. So you're supposed to go so, back to class. So I didn't go back to class. Oh. But what happened was, my dad called the school to let him know to tell me that he was gonna pick me up. 
from school. <laughs> so that's why I guess they called down. Oh, so it class. triggered. And they were uh, like, where's Justin? Uh -huh. They were calling me over the loudspeaker to the office and all like that. Mm. Wow. Like, man, listen, you, you weren't animate enough. I'm like, I was in there with the BGs. You know we had a track meet. And I was I, nervous. And I take it that yeah. this was before you had like a cell phone that he couldn't get a hold of you. Oh, yeah, this was, yeah, this was 99. Uh, okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna say presentation at work because I've actually been under the weather on DK, and that's not that's not fun. Yeah, I'll yeah. take work too because yeah. I would mess with DK. You paying for that? Exactly. I was gonna say I would not want to have that situation. Time, PTO, yeah. vacation, right. all kind of stuff I can use. Right. When, mm -hmm. when I'm having fun, I don't want to have absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Here's a here's one of those little not a lighter note. Okay. Would you rather have hands for feet or feet for hands? So does that mean like I have hands and hand feet? Have or hands for feet or feet? So you asking if we feet. want four hands? So you switch your hands feet. and feet. So your hands would be down on your feet. Your no, you're, feet no, you're saying no, I think it's what Goose said. You'll have four hands or four feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'll take the four hands. Me too. For sure. You know how much stuff you could pick up? Yeah. I always wear shoes. Well, it don't bother me. I don't always wear gloves. I don't. I hardly ever. <laughs> I hardly ever. I'd be, out here, I'd be out here looking like Spider Man. You monkeys got like four hands. Yeah, because I don't want yeah, to look like that. I don't want to look like that, though. But I don't want feet on my hands either. Like, that's gross. I know. That's gross to me because feet are gross to me. So. Yeah. yeah. You I'll just shake somebody's hand and your big toe sticking up there. <laughs> like, exactly. <ew. laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yo, exactly. but if you had four hands, four feet, you would never be able to clip your nail. Oh, no, oh, you no, wouldn't. No opposing thumbs. You wouldn't be able to you do a lot of stuff. You wouldn't be able to flush the toilet. Oh. Oh, you can. Oh, you can flush the toilet. You, you can flush a public toilet, but I, you can yeah. Yeah, at home? Yeah, at home would be more of a challenge. Yeah. yeah, public toilet. I, I flush on my feet anyway. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> there, there's no other way to do that. Same concept. Yeah. Sorry, co workers. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you're supposed to wash your hands. Ain't no sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. I think do we can all too. agree on that. All right, so here's the last one. And this one is even on a, light, a more lighter note. Uh, would you rather celebrate your birthday every week or never celebrate your birthday again? But still age at the same rate. I don't really celebrate my birthday, so I, I don't really celebrate mine too much. Wait, Tyra celebrate celebrate birthday. your birth. So is your birthday actually occurring every week? <laughs> no, <laughs> but you, you just like, like, you just like, like, like my birthday me. in February and and, and, and and in June I'm like, right. oh, it's my birthday. Yeah. It's my birthday. I celebrate all year long. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. No, I'm gonna. I'm I'm gonna go with the second one. I don't really. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna go with the second one. But, I'll go with the first one. Yeah, because you know, because when people be like, "Oh, it's my birthday when I'm celebrating all month long," in my head, I'm like, "Dumbass." <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I, 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 I think the same thing. Like, why is you get attention, that? and yeah. I don't give a fuck whether it's your birthday or not. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I, I, I would. I would. I would celebrate my birthday every week. Yeah, I would do that. I would. Because at least I'm celebrating something on a weekly basis. But you know what? Yeah. Just Unfortunately, I'm going to look like a dummy, but you know. Your what birthday you is a national holiday. Like, so everybody's celebrating you. Well, hold up. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Okay. okay. Because we are like officially celebrating my birthday week because of this question, right? Mm -hmm. Does that mean y'all pay for my drinks and all that too? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. See, it's a slippery slope. Because the, 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 I don't need to celebrate my birthday every week because I could just keep aging and not celebrate my birthday ever. But just pick random days to celebrate me because I'm dope. There's that. Done deal. I like that. I'm going with that yeah. one. I want to change my answer. I want to. I want to do what he just said. Okay. They, I'm like, yo. <laughs> you have to, well, that's not the rules of what you're rather. They're like, it's <laughs> your birthday. No, you like you like one. Go. <laughs> I would like to thank myself for doing all this hard work. Absolutely. And it is a pleasure for you to meet me. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not the rules. The rules is you have to pick one. We can't well, I'm going with the, the, the second. I'm yeah. going with the second. 
I'm going yeah, with the I'm second one too. But I'm just telling you what I'm doing instead. <laughs> Are you celebrating every week? I'll celebrate my birthday. Okay. So then right. you have it, y'all. If you come get your budget together, Tyra. Yeah. Because you know what? Because you like I, I think about it like this. On your real birthday, you really don't get to celebrate with everybody. Much. Now, now this is one thing. If mm-hmm. I had a job that gave me all for my birthday every year, then I celebrate every week. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I had jobs like that before. It's your birthday, you automatically get the day off. I've had one job like that I put. But if I had a job like that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, every week. My birthday, I celebrate my birthday every week mm-hmm. on Friday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every week. <laughs> As you should celebrate yourself. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Thank you for tuning Those were good, in. Uh, if you if you have questions or you want to put in your answers to the Would You Rather, please put them in there. We can uh, continue the discussion in the 10 7 uh, group on Facebook. If you're not in there, join it. Um, go you on YouTube it. and like and subscribe to Nutris Radio on YouTube. There you go. All right. Well, now it's, part for, it's, it's time for another <laughs> part of the show that y'all like to be newsy about. Me too. <laughs> That's what we did. It is the Dear 107 portion of the show where we read your letters, emails, text messages, DMs, whatever the case may be. And uh, we give you our unprofessional, professional opinions on on, on your situation. Um, mm-hmm. And if you would like to submit a Dear 107 letter, it's very easy. All you got to do is go to NewTwistRadio.com. Right there on the front page, you'll see uh, the 107 show logo. And you see a place where you can write in your own Dear 107 letter right there. Hit send. And you may have your letter read on the show. Absolutely. Like hundreds of people have already had. Yep. All right, let's go. Right, I got the first one. Yep. Yes. Uh, pardon me. Dear 10 7, my sister in law and her husband come to our home for every holiday. We do all the cooking and all the cleanup. I have several issues with this. It's been 20 years, and I Dang. feel very taken advantage of. <laughs> they don't call us or invite us to their house for dinner, ever. They don't even call and ask to meet us at a restaurant. We only see them when we invite them to share holidays at our home. They show up 15 minutes before the meal is set to be served and never offer to chip in with any cleanup. I've expressed to my husband that I'm tired of hosting but he wants to continue because this is the only time his side of the family tries to spend any time with us and our two children. I'm beginning to feel very resentful. Should I put my foot down or keep quiet to keep the peace? Mm. See, so this is what I'm saying. You should have so, said something so, 15 years ago. So yeah. when you say that y'all guys are celebrating holidays at your home and it's the only time that your husband's side of the family is to come around or whatever he sees them the most when you all are hosting mm-hmm. if you bitching about two people because i'm thinking about our family and if and if we host something it's going to be 50 60 70 people there mm-hmm. and if you're bitching about two people you being petty mm, that's true because you clean up and cook for the other <laughs> 73 people mm-hmm. or however many it is Man. i feel as though you being petty and the other thing about it, have you asked them when they get there? Be like, hey, break them leaves in the front lawn. You <laughs> think what I'm saying? You know, you know, like, like, listen, what have you done instead of bitching to your husband about yeah. it? Yeah. But maybe it's a situation where, like, she feels like it's not her place to say something to them. After 20 years, how is it not your place to say something to somebody that's family? Yeah, well, not everybody's family is like our family. And at your own house? Right. I say whatever I want to anybody in my four walls. And other people's four walls. <laughs> and he's not <laughs> lying. <laughs> and he's not lying. He's not lying. But maybe, like I said, everybody's family is not like that. So maybe she's not comfortable saying that to them. And maybe she doesn't want it to seem like she's the All bad right. guy. Hold on. I got, I got one line in this letter that makes her ar- argument like null and void. Okay. Okay. okay one line. Because she already said, like, they come over every holiday or whatever right. it is. Right? She said, we only see them when we invite them to share holidays at our home. Right. So don't invite them. 
Hold on, but if, if you're inviting somebody, and this is the only time they, if you're inviting them, are you also expecting them to clean up as well if you're if it's a holiday? You see, like people will volunteer, but if you're inviting them and you're and that's the only time you see like absolutely. But see, this is the other thing. She said we do all the cooking, I guess, meaning her and her husband and possibly her kids, depending on how old they are. We do all the cleanup, meaning her and her husband and possibly the kids, depending on how old they are. But then she says, I'm feeling taken advantage of. Yeah. Like she's in it all by herself. Yeah. 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 I, I was going to say, at least you're getting help. She didn't say, I'm doing all the cooking. I'm doing all the cleaning. At least you're getting help. You're not doing it by yourself. Listen, and like I said, tell them. Be like, listen here. It's been 20 years. Y'all ain't even put y'all dishes in the dishwasher. Something going to change. I mean, you could do that. Have that conversation. I kind of agree with the the comment from Daryl Watson. Oh, can you yeah, put, 20 can you years. Put that back up? Like, it's, it's been 20 years. Just keep the peace. It's too late now. I agree with that. You should have said something 15 years ago. You should have mm -hmm. said something five years ago. No, 15 years. 15, yeah, 15 yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because at, at this point now, everybody's setting their weight. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. So you just, absolutely. You just go ahead and like, and, and like I said, that pill, honey. Like I said, if you want to change it, you have you may have to be the catalyst. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Dorothy, I'm glad you can make it to Christmas. I can't wait until you help me do the dishes when we're done, <laughs> so we can have that sister time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that my, then, my advice would be keep, keep <clears throat> and tell them how you feel. If a lot of, if you tell them how you feel, maybe they'll stop coming. Maybe they won't. But at least and maybe they'll help. But at least they're gonna, they're they're gonna stop coming. They're gonna stop coming because they no, don't come sure. anyway. For sure. But then you but be prepared to be the bad guy. I don't mind being the bad guy as long as we I'm know. right. Yeah, they, they're gonna stop. I, you know, I believe I, I'm right. I, 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 I feel like know. I feel like in this letter, I feel like the family doesn't like her. That's what I was gonna say. Like I feel I like the know. family dynamics are missing here. Like yeah. why are they only coming over when you invite them? Like it's been 20 years. There's something that's missing there. Maybe they don't. That's what I think that they don't like her, and maybe they're no, coming to appease no. him. You see, what you have to understand is maybe the family never really got together like that. Yeah. Before this guy got married, had kids, and had a place to host. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That that mm -hmm. a lot. Listen, poverty and poor decisions plague families all the time. And mm -hmm. it takes a long person to break mm -hmm. that cycle. Mm -hmm. So maybe he is the one that broke the cycle mm -hmm. and now has a place and he's doing well and he has a place where he wants to host and maybe inspire and motivate other family mm -hmm. members to do better. Well, when you put maybe it like that, that, maybe that's what that maybe that's yeah. the page he's on, and maybe that's the page the family is on. Well, so when you put it like that, I I I'm doubling down on what I said. <laughs> she should keep quiet. Well, I just, I do, I mean, if she's feeling frustrated, I do think it's worth a conversation, like not an argument, you know what I mean? Because maybe y'all not seeing eye to eye. Because if he's, if that's his motive, then just let her know, because she so may be more thing. accepting of it. This the you other thing we can do. And Instead of hosting, do be like, you know what? We're going to eat Thanksgiving out. We made reservations for 50 people or whatever it is at this mm -hmm. restaurant. You dig what I'm saying? And then that way, Nobody's prepping, nobody's right. cleaning up. Yeah, yeah. And everybody should at that point. We know how that goes sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pay at least close mm -hmm. to what they're supposed to pay. Mm -hmm. You did what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, like, so th there are other options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think that's a lot of good advice. We would have it catered. You will exactly. Yeah. You did what I'm saying. Listen, like, we're not cooking this year. We're having it catered. We need everybody to chip in. 40 mm -hmm. bucks per mm -hmm. person for the caterer, and the caterer will come, prep, cook, and clean up. That's actually not a bad idea. It's actually not. That's a really mm -hmm. good idea. We should do that. We should do that. <laughs> I I'm going to look into that. We're about to end the show here and just have a family discussion. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I was about to be like, y'all want to do that? <laughs> um, all right. You, wanna, you ready to move on, Justin? Yeah, yeah, let's go on to the next one. Okay. 
<clears throat> Dear 107, I've been divorced for two years. A year ago, I met a man through a mutual friend. He's going through a divorce. We have gotten serious and have been traveling back and forth between Ohio, where he lives, and New Jersey, where I am. He wants me to quit my job and find a new one so we can make our relationship permanent in Ohio. I'm a sales support coordinator for a broker, and I've been with my company for a very long time. There's no guarantee I could find a job that pays as well as this one does. He has his own business, which runs itself at this point. He also cares for an elderly aunt and uncle. I want to be with him, but at my age, late 40s, I'm hesitant to start a new job. Also, I'd be leaving my adult kids behind. And yes, while they are grown, we are close and I would miss a lot. First of all, a year is not long enough to drop everything for me. Exactly. To drop everything that you're doing and everything you got. I agree. And run and chase some dude. I agree. Or to run exactly. and chase anybody. I agree. It's only a year. Yep. And if you have a business that allows you the autonomy because you have your own business. He has his own business. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. To be where you want to be, then why isn't he moving? Because he takes care yeah. of the yacht and uncle. That's sound like I ain't with eight kids. Right. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, so, so I'm like, you want me to drop everything? So who won't be here with my kids? But you want me to be there with you to take care of your aunt and uncle yeah. and your business. I mean, where, where's yeah. the equity in this whole yeah, thing? It's not like y'all. It's not like y'all just need to have a long distance relationship. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because if the aunt and uncle are that elderly and infirm, then maybe they are at the jumping off point. Y'all weren't thinking. It's very positive. I mean, they say I know they ain't say nothing about no great aunt. No. Right. <laughs> it, says, it says he cares for his elderly aunt and uncle. Mm. I mean, I'm not saying that they're sickly, but elderly, you have to jump it off one. What is the definition of elderly? At what age are you one is one considered elderly? I would say like 80 and up. It used to be what 55. <laughs> yeah. I would say at least 65. I would say at least 80, right? I don't know. I'd say 70. Oh, what y'all think? Tell us what y'all think. Because we have, we have, a, we have a huge I'm range of ages that watch us. So. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. My mother is 75. I don't consider her elderly. Okay. She's a little nutty fruitcake, but not elderly. See, I, I for me, like elderly, I, I think of elderly more as a a condition of being rather than, right, being. than an age. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. Like if you're frail, well, I, well, I, I, think it, I think it's a combination of the two. Yeah. You do know what I'm saying? Because even if you have a condition that limits your mobility or whatever, but you're 20, I wouldn't consider you elderly. But if you had a condition that limits, you know, your mobility or you had some type of illness and you're let's say 68. I might say elderly because that's the picture that it paints. Right. Yeah, because 68 is not. Or not yeah. So it, ha it has to be a combination. A combination. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Daryl, it sounds like you would be giving up too much. Don't do it. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. A year is not enough time. Because uh -huh. all I hear is thing, everything that you're giving up. I don't hear anything that he's giving up. Right. And the fact that he told you to find a job there. Tells you that he's not gonna take care of you. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah, but this, he, this he company that him. runs itself. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he'll he'll do the boyfriend thing or whatever it is. But what I mean is, he's still expecting you to work. So it's not like he's saying, "Quit your job, move here with me." I got you. Right. Exactly. Even that would be a too. That would give me pause. <laughs> There's one more thing, and I know you know eventually it won't be a thing. Maybe, but she's divorced two years. He's going through a divorce. So he ain't even done with it yet. Oh, yeah. no. I ain't even pay attention. He's not even done with the divorce yet. So. Yeah. Stay put. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Stay he's put. only been with this dude for a year. You've you been divorced to for go two back years. It's a very short plane like, ride between like New Jersey and Ohio. Do you know what you want? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Besides, not your ex husband. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Do you know yourself? You get to, to know, know you. People know yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah.
Move on to the next one because we're gonna be talking about some male gold diggers a little later on. Y'all know that already. Right? We're gonna be talking about some male gold diggers, so all right. Tyra Hill. Yeah, the third one. You want it? It's right. Oh, I got it. Sorry, I got a little confused. My bad. Here we go. Dear 107, a woman I've been interested in for quite some time recently moved to my city. Unfortunately, I'll be moving away in a few weeks. Recently, I invited her to join me and my best friend for drinks. I thought it would be nice to introduce the two of them since she's new to the town and needs to meet people. Shortly after the dinner, my best friend asked me if I would mind if he asked her on a date. I didn't know how to answer. I've expressed interest in this woman to my best friend before, but nothing has ever happened between us. So I guess she's not necessarily off limits. What should I do? First of all, who's a dumb dude to introduce a chick you interested in to another dude? Right. That's the that's who ready to start it off from. <laughs> right. <laughs> sir, you are doing the most, sir. <laughs> you started off wrong. My thing is you get ready to move. You don't know who you're gonna meet out there. Stop trying to have your cake and eat it too. Move yes. on. You don't even know this girl like that. You might end up not liking her. Right, but this is the thing if you liked her, why aren't you like first of why all? Why did you just ask? We're still here, so ain't no you don't need to know nobody else until I'm gone. <laughs> <Exactly. Hey. laughs> <laughs> now, the two, now, the two of them gonna be busting it up, and you gonna be packing your bags and softy at the same time. Uh -huh. If you don't speak up about it, then you got to exactly, bro. You might as well be like, Go on ahead. It ain't even no need, he moving, right? right. I mean, it, but this is the thing. It. So I guess the chance of you guys having a long distance relationship didn't even cross your mind because I'm not introducing a woman that I'm interested to and to anybody. Right. I don't he, even if your friend was butt ugly, she'd be like, "Oh, he's so funny," <laughs> and then it's a wrap. Right. Yep, he's so, <laughs> he's so funny. He's actually kind of cute. Mm -hmm. uh, he's right. got a so, yep. You should have shot your shot and seen what it was, yep. even though you're about to move mm -hmm. before you introduced it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you ain't no female friend you can introduce her to. Well, the thing about it is you be she, like, yo, bro, I'm he I'm linking up with this shorty I've been talking to. She just moved to town. She didn't tell him yeah, you want to go. She, she didn't tell him <laughs> she was interested in dude. Dude just was like, Would you mind? Like, she might be like, No, thank you, John. Or whatever, you know what I mean? That's true. That is true. No. Like, yeah, we don't know, but there ain't no ain't no point in planting that seed. But goose is mad at you, sir. Yeah, that's <laughs> dumb. Yeah. If you're interested in the female, no other males matter. Right. I don't even want to talk about them. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. There it All is. Right. So we got one more. <clears throat> one more, Justin. My turn. All right, we go. Dear 10 7. I dated this man for five years. He used to work prior to the pandemic, but he hasn't really actively applied to jobs. My biggest issue is the fact that I'm paying all the expenses for the household we share together, and he doesn't need to do anything to assist me. At the same time, he's starting to treat me like a servant in my own house. He controls the TV. Foods that I like, he throws away since he doesn't eat them. He has outbursts and tantrums when I tell him to get a job. I'm fed up with supporting a grown man. What should I do? I'm frustrated. You should stop supporting a, a grown, grown man. man. Well, first yeah. of all, if you ask him, why are you asking? That seems you just said a bunch of stuff you was tired of. What you what you going to do about it? <laughs> right. Right. But wait, the pandemic is three years. Y'all been together five years. Yeah. He had a job before that. He had a job. But he hasn't been working in three years. And there's been massive shortages. Places are hiring like crazy. Oh, you yeah. ain't got nothing. No little part-time something. Nothing. He got comfortable with her doing everything. No online nothing. Yeah, Come no. On, but see, the, the thing is, this is the thing, that there's a side effect of COVID that the medical professionals don't really tell you about or talk about. It's called being fucking lazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ever yo, you go in the stores, it's wine right at store. Don't nobody want to do nothing no more. Mm -hmm. Nope. Yep. And you got one of them dudes. 
You dig what I'm saying? So if he don't want to do nothing, show him what nothing look like. Yep, that's exactly right. Yeah. Show him what nothing look like. You know what? How much money you bought in this house this week? Huh? None. Okay. What's in the refrigerator? Nothing. Yep. Exactly. I while I was at work, I'm not hungry. There you is. Know what I'm Listen. There's another, there's another aspect to this that I think is a little. I think I'll be taking the breakers out the breaker box. I, th- I can pack my stuff up and move. That's what she I, needs. I think. Do. I think there's one more thing that needs to be addressed though. What? The foods that she likes, she takes them and throws them out. Right. Yeah, like, bro. First that, of all, see, don't touch anything all, that you did not purchase. I'd be ready to put my hands on you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah. touch anything that you did not purchase. Just because you don't like it doesn't exactly. mean you have the right to throw it away. That's kind of a him telling you what to do. Yeah, or that's a, that's listen, you, listen, this is the perfect situation of if he ever leaves the house, he come back to an empty crib. Yep. He come back to the lock chain. I pull up with the U-Haul and all my cousins. Yep. All 900 of them. Where your male cousins at? Where they at? Where your family? Y'all ask that all the time. Like, you ain't got no male cousins? Right. We ain't got no male cousins. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but this, this is the other thing. Male cousin is not going to do anything for her if she's not willing to do anything for herself. That's right. That's true. That's true. You dig know what I'm saying? Because no matter how upset they get, mm-hmm. if she's willing to accept this behavior, what's the yeah. point of me even saying anything? Right. Absolutely. I'm just going to look like the fool. I agree. Yep. yep. All right. Well, let me slide you up. know what you need to do, lady. Yeah. Well, you just need to do it. Thanks for the letters, y'all. Keep them coming. Keep the opinions yep. coming. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll get on a Facebook Live or a, what's Instagram Live or whatever. And, and we'll talk about some of these maybe a little more. So mm-hmm. um, definitely stay tuned with us here at the 10 7 Show on New to Us Radio. Um, we're going to get into the topic of this show. And, Tara, I'm going to let you introduce the topic because we also have a video that's going to go with it. Right. So our topic tonight is male gold diggers. Do you see my hat? Oh. And spell that G O L D diggers, not G O A L diggers. Right. Gold. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you want to play the video or you want me to read my little opening? Let me go ahead and play this video. Okay. Do you see the baby? Because mm-hmm. the child's not biologically connected to me. Right. So, what do you like? I'm is, not getting involved in that. What people. What people don't know, because you will never see anything other than a smile. I don't let you in on my private life. So, what people don't know is. Every day we argue. Every day we argued about this. He wanted a baby. I did not want a baby because I have Jeffrey with special needs. I was tired. Right. And he was like, it ain't fair that you have a baby. Do you have a son? And I don't have a son. And I mean, it literally, basically, he was like, well, if you don't have my baby, then. So when somebody do this. Right. That mean I'm going to go. And, and it was so public, our wedding, because he wanted to have it on TV. He wanted to have a big wedding, which the IRS is still audited me for. And so it was just like, it was, it was so public. It was an embarrassment. So basically... I had consigned my, okay, we're going to have this baby and I'm just being unhappy for the rest of my life and have an affair. Because I said, well, how are we going to take care of this child? Because I'm working two jobs. I'm doing a newlywed game. I'm doing a viewer. He's like, we'll get a second nanny. How are we supposed to afford a second nanny? I'm just supposed to work yeah. myself to And death. then I told him, because he was an out writer. And I said, well, you got to get a job writing. And he was like, no, because if we have a baby, I'm staying home. No, I don't do stay-at-home husbands. I do husbands that work. But he was adamant. I'm not going to Hollywood to get no job. I'm going to stay home. And well, then how am I supposed to? Then that means I got to work. So people don't understand. We were having those kind of arguments every day. And then I got to go on the air and be happy. So right. I had fun. I didn't pick the surrogate. I didn't pick... I didn't pick the egg. I didn't pick the gestational carrier. I was not involved. So when I finally put him out because I found out he was doing all kinds of stuff, he said, I, and I said, well, I'll pay you $2,000 a month, 2,500 for your son. And if, um, you know, if you need anything, if I'm working, I'll be the fairy godmother. I'll come, hey, Kevin, hey, I'll come in here and I'll help you out. And um, he was like, no, I want 10,000 a month. And he said, if my, if your son go to private school, my son go to private school. And I said, but my son is in the school for kids with special needs if he wasn't he'd be open to public school in jersey so it was that kind of extortion stuff to people and because god when he was doing all the interviews god <laughs> was like shut it down so because god was like don't talk i never said nothing so people don't know then you know I- so it, that's where you wanted to end it right there yeah that's good thank you okay mm-hmm. so talk to us first of all for people that may not know let's tell them what a gold digger is okay so what I found was in the interest in the interest of gender equality, 
It's important to note that men are just as capable of being gold diggers as women. The problem is we haven't been trained as a society to look out for male gold diggers. So whoever wrote that, I don't know where they grew up at because I, I, I knew that. I mean, I did too, but you should, like, 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 what rock were you living under? Well, let's just say this here, because I've been saying this here lately. People who have common sense are now in the minority. Mm-hmm. Common sense is not common anymore. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. I mean, now, I, I, I mean, I understand I'm, that, but like, like, like the the most popular term for for a gold dick. Oh, a pimp. Oh, a pimp. Okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Everybody knows, you know what everybody know what a pimp is. Pimp ain't strong. And just, because, and just because you get with a woman and you're not, you know what I mean, persuading her to, or forcing her to sell her body to get you money, don't mean you're not pimping her. Well, exactly. for certain. For certain. And see, my question is, I mean, I don't, you know, no, but to me, listening to her whole story, and I'm not by any means trying to blame her. But what I'm trying to figure out is about her self-esteem. Yeah. Because if these questions, like, you married, did these conversations go on before y'all got married? Because why would you marry a man who say, you don't give me a baby, then I'm like, and you marry this man anyway? Yep. Like, I'm not trying to blame her, but I'm just saying, like, you are I mean, responsible. These are her decisions. Like, yeah. So later Make on in the price. video, she said she got married because she was scared that she wouldn't get married again and she was getting older and things of that nature. So to me, fear is not a reason to get married. No. Yeah, that's why I said. If you have fear be, that you're going to die alone and you can't meet the right man, you know what you do? Right. You go talk to somebody to help you come right. up with open skills. That's what I'm going to say. You deal with all of that. What's going on with the people in your team? Like, I feel sorry for a lot of these. Right. I, I bet you a therapist would have been cheaper. They, they need therapists, and the people around them are really, a lot of them don't have their best interests at heart. No. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, how did you let, like, where are your homegirls at? Nobody spotted the fact that this dude, I'm sure there were signs. You know what I mean? And sometimes hindsight is 2020. 20. Right. But I mean, that's crazy how she's being done. Um, Yo. But I'm just like, what kind of conversations did y'all have? But this the other thing. Yeah, that's something we'll never He know. went on to say, and this, and this tells you the type of man that he is. Mm-hmm. You have a son. You have a child. I don't. But but this is your wife. But exactly. So that's your you know child. So as so w- soon as he said made that statement, you should have knew what page he was on. And you right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. You sh- it should have been an annulment. Yep. Right then and there. Yep. Because when you I marry her, and she has a child, it's a bad thing. That's such a millennial attitude. All right. So here are a couple of uh, signs that you can look out for, ladies. He dresses like he's already rich. Have you noticed that? Is that like an indication? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. But, but, like, because be, so so because I, I like, because I'm dressed and I approach you, I'm, I'm dressed decently and I approach a young lady. You like she whoever writing this article said, "Bing bing, he may be a gold digger. Watch out, ladies." Right. So now I'm already on an uphill battle, even more so than usual. Right. Because so, now you're like, oh, he dressed nice. Right. So we can put the, the link to this article in the show notes, right, Justin? Yeah, I'm not feeling that one, but go what, ahead. What is, what is dressing rich? Well, so according to this article, it says men who love money but don't have it want to look the part of a rich person. The guy wants women to think he has money on his own, even if he doesn't. By dressing in expensive clothes, he's trying to give off the impression that he's a man of means. Like, that is kind of true. Though. I feel like we watched a documentary on some I mean, guy that was like, scamming women, and he yeah. was like, oh, I'm on my yacht, and I just need you to send me this much money, and oh, then no. I want to be here. I, I understand all that, but see, in your example, the difference is, is that now he's telling you things that he has mm-hmm. that he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? That first one, he dresses rich, is them telling you to judge a book by its cover. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you're right mm-hmm. because it, it does go on to say that he thinks this will attract women who have money because they'll be able to relate to him. Obviously, there's a chance that he really is rich, ladies, 
but it's a bigger chance that he's a gold digger in sheep's clothing. I don't know about that. That's, I can understand that's, that's, that. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a possibility. A statement. Yeah. But to me, not for me, most people when they leave the house want to look nice. Right. So, and most people want nice things. So that first statement to me would apply to a lot of people. Yeah, but for the purpose uh, of the show, we're talking about men who are gold diggers. Right. So let's just I, I think this is just a lot of men. This thing would apply to a lot of men, okay. right? And don't I think it's like, 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 like I get we going to Target. I put on my khakis. I put on the button down shirt and the shoes on Saturday. I may throw a hat on. You like where are you going? You're all you're dressed up. You're going to we're going to Target. This one here, we never look like we're going to the same place. He's going to the ball. I'm going to clean the toilets at the ball. Because <laughs> you dress you, I dress me. <laughs> What's this comment? So what is dressing rich? I wear suits almost every day. I don't think it's dressing rich. Yeah, good so, question. I'm so, not sure. So, no, so I, I think what it is is um the name brand stuff. Yeah, they kind of dress the part. You, you dig what I'm saying? So you you it's an Armani suit or whatever, whatever is popping. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's what they're saying, rich. They try to look right. the part. Right, exactly. For what they it. think, because I know rich people, and he drive a minivan, millionaire. And, and wears like khaki shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, millionaire. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So they they think they're dressing rich. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Like their but, idea but of also rich also, it depends on what circles you're trying to go into. You know what I mean? Exactly. So like, yeah, that's see, also... yeah, see, they probably going looking for the the uh, housewives of hell. Right. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Your job piques his interest. So that kind of is like what Sherry Shepard was saying. If a guy starts laying on the charm after you mention that you have a high paying job, look out. Like their female mm -hmm. counterparts, male gold diggers are great at looking for signs that someone is loaded. If he only yeah, is interested after finding out you make a lot of money, he's probably a gold digger. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts on that? So, I can agree with that. So the way I look at it is I look at it like it's like gambling. Mm -hmm. So if you're a lady of means and you have a decent job, mm -hmm. and then you meet a guy and he's really interested in your job, and because of the salary that you make. Now you are you willing to take a calculated risk mm -hmm. and risk the money that you make? And, the, and risk the money that you make in case, you know, so he don't want to steal your money. Mm -hmm. But it's like I said, it's like gambling. I got 20 bucks. This is my last $20 for the month. Am I going to gamble it away? Am I going to risk it? Hoping I get more. Or am I going to mm -hmm. keep my $20? Because you know what? As long as I got my $20, I got my $20. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. women have to make smarter decisions and not mm -hmm. put and not, not let that the, the hazy shade of gray that these cats be having. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, sure. I just feel like it would be so difficult for a woman to try to make, like, what, what we're talking about in this article thus far, is, it's almost like a snapshot decision of this dude right. is a gold digger, this dude is not. You know what I mean? Because, right. like, let's say let's say Tyra was like, a, you know, I, I wanted to be on the radio. So let's say Tyra was a big time radio, you know, personality. Her job would intrigue me. Doesn't mean I'm a gold digger. Right. It doesn't mean I want to live off it's just, of It's interesting money. to you because that's right. what you do. Right. Yeah, it's, it's right. interesting to me. Yeah, so like, that's kind of what I was saying. Like, you, you risk what you, you, you decide what you want to risk things on. You right. dig what I, I'm saying? I, yeah, I agree with that. I think mm -hmm. this list, too, is a com like a combo. Like, if you're seeing all of these things, like not, I don't think it's necessarily one of these things that means, you know, hardcore that person is a gold digger. Mm -hmm. But if you're seeing multiple, like most of these qualities in one person, that means you need to pull your emotion out of it and really start to take a good look at his character. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Before you move forward. Right. So mm -hmm. where is this? Do you see that last comment? Can you pull that, that last comment up? Excessive name brand logos all over their clothes. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah. yeah, yo, because we know it. Listen, we all know people uh -huh. who wear all the name brand stuff 
but they live with their mama. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. You, you understand what I'm saying? That, that, that's mm -hmm. what it's about. Yeah. Every, every time you see them, you can read them like a newspaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because yep. you can see all the logos and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no. Yep, that's true. So no. Paying a lot of money with the I mean, you, you got a Gucci belt with a trans pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There's nothing wrong with riding the bus. No, absolutely not. <laughs> All right. That Gucci belt could have went to something. Else. Yeah. He asked about your family right away. I don't think that's wrong. Most guys aren't mm -hmm. interested in your family, or at least they won't be early in the relationship. If a guy is quick to ask about your parents, where they live, and what they do, he's probably fishing to see if you have any family money. Early on, a guy should be asking about you, not your family. All right. Where'd you live? Where'd you grow up? I'm going to get the same answers about your parents when you answer me. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I feel like I feel like somebody asked about the family. It it may I mean that's I never even thought about a gold digger aspect to that, but I would be just hesitant <clears throat> hesitant anyway. Like, why are you asking about my family? Like, do you want to know if I have people around because you're a terrible person? And once we get to dating, after you fool me, there's not going to be anybody around to save me. Is that what you want to know? Like. Maybe I watched too many movies. Just to know if your last name is Rockefeller. Well, well, like, <laughs> yeah. Personally, I'm guarded with my information anyway. So you gotta mm -hmm. earn. You earn some of this, and you earn a little bit more. And you earn a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. All right. Wait a minute. This what? one. This one kills me. This one's stupid. He asked for your pin number. What? You gotta be dumb as a bag of rocks. I'd give them the wrong one. Why would who who does it? Like, oh, can I get your ATM pin number? What? Okay. He's I'm not like, it's zero four one three. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to outright ask you for your pin number. Remember, gold diggers are typically clever. If you mention needing to go to the ATM and he jumps at the chance to go for you, something isn't right. I don't I don't know about that. It's what? not like he's in a rush to run other nah, errands. Right? Nah, man. Nah, man. Nah, man. There's there's wrong right there. the <laughs> nah, see, so first of all, if somebody offers to go to the Mac machine for you, mm -hmm. first of all, that gives me pause. And that's why right. I say, I'm not giving you my pin number. Flat right. out. I'm not giving you my card. Right. What? I don't even know where you live. <laughs> right. I only have a cell phone number for you. You know you dig what I'm saying? Right. I don't have, yeah. No. You realize you guys are debunking this entire topic, right? I'm not, we're not debunking the topic. No, we're not debunking the topic. We're just right. debunking the aspects of this article. Okay. So because I because I can tell you, I could you know, we all know that you know there are guys that live off women's money. Absolutely. Sure. So it's not like it, the gold diggers don't exist. The male gold digger doesn't right. exist. It's just this it's, article, I think whoever wrote this article got um chat GPT to write it for them. Oh my god, no, whoever wrote this article, I think is butthurt. <laughs> <laughs> and just took everything in there, every well, red flag that they ever had. It definitely was it definitely was a woman that wrote it. It definitely was a woman. Oh uh, yeah, well, it, it shows. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so do you want me to continue? Sure. Or, okay. Are there, are there any good ones? Like, is there any ones that we could be like, yeah? I mean, I oh, this, the, the, the next one is. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm here. Oh. He encourages lavish spending. Gold diggers always want to spend someone else's money on expensive things. Even if you're buying something for yourself, he shouldn't be pushing you to make an expensive purchase. A gold digger will want you to buy high end stuff. He wants to live that kind of lifestyle and wants you to think you can have that lifestyle with him. Even if it's your money that's paying for it. Thoughts, comments? I mean, I hear that. Mm -hmm. But she's dealing with a dude who really don't have money. Because scammers know the best way to get people to spend money is to spend money on them. Mm. You spend mm -hmm. money on somebody else, it lower their guard. And it's like, oh, he bought me a such and such bag, or he he took me to dinner mm -hmm. here. So now, it, now you feel more closer to the person. And, and you're more likely to give up some of that dough. I think that's just, that's it makes just sense. my opinion. It makes sense. It does make sense. It's like the old, you got to spend money to make money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, because now, as a gold digger, I'm setting the tone. Mm -hmm. I might spend 
spend my last five, six hundred dollars to set the tone. But I'm hoping that once I set this tone, you'll keep it. You'll keep it up. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I'll take you out to dinner, nice dinner, whatever. And then when I'm down on my luck and I ain't got no more money left and I need you to pay, I already set the expectation. Right. I already set the tone. So I'm like, babe, I messed up. But uh, she's like, she might say, you want to go out to dinner? I'm like, babe, my pockets is messed up this week. Don't worry about it. I got you. All right, mm-hmm. cool. Where y'all want to go? Let's go. Let's go here. Okay. Or let's go there. That makes sense. You dig what I'm saying? So speaking of dinner. Because now, now she's like, oh, we're a power couple <laughs> or whatever it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So right. now you got to keep up with the, these Joneses. imaginary Joneses. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then the next one is he finds ways to skip out on the bill early on. All guys will try to pick up the check for dinner or drinks, but a gold digger will start finding ways to weasel out of the check. Sometimes mm-hmm. he'll forget his wallet. Sometimes mm-hmm. he'll have to use the bathroom when he sees yep. him coming back with the check. Remember, gold diggers are clever and will always try to find ways to get out of footing the bill. Yeah, I agree with that one. That's, I think that's the most accurate. <laughs> so, uh, so that was a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it. Do you guys think that like guys should always pay? Why do you think? I thought no. she, was, she was asking you. I feel like if you if you ask me out, like if you ask me out, then I feel like you should pay. Yeah. Um, but I like, feel like, like whoever asks. Yeah. So like, if I asked ask out, I wouldn't expect the other person to pay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would do that too. If I ask you out, because you don't ask me out, I like, ask you, me if I ask you out, you better eat where the hell I take you. Oh my God! Here we go with this. Don't take me to the Cheesecake Factory. There's nothing wrong with the Cheesecake Factory. You should have busted in the head with a damn I like the Cheesecake Factory. I like the Cheesecake Factory, too. But meanwhile, can we just say how, like, in in his defense, he was like, well, I waited for you for an hour to come down. We oh, had no. no. I was like, we don't you have no defense. Why no. I mean, I mean, what, what I'm saying is he has nothing to defend. That's no, what but what I'm say. saying is like, I mean, first of all, she's been dragged all over the internet, and we don't even know if that was like legitimate or if it was oh, just like no, something. But she that was put set herself up. in that situation. She whether, definitely did, whether it was scripted or not. But he was like, "Well, we had a reservation, but you took so long to come downstairs. We missed our reservation time. Uh, so at was least he's still trying to feed her. Mm-hmm. God bless her. She a woman, a good woman. I'd be like, oh, baby, no. Oh, for I'm sure. Sorry. And she's going to die alone. I'd be like, I'm sorry, baby. You're right. You're looking fine. Where you want to eat at? McDonald's. We going over. I'm headed there right now. <laughs> yeah. I pull up. I'd get out, run around the side, <laughs> open the door for her, let her out, go back around the side, get in the driver's seat, and, and pull the fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> pull off. Leave her standing right there, looking like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> Look like this in her team. She's like, you don't in your team. Are oh, you right? <laughs> and her Sheen. Sheen. She Listen, mm-hmm. I got stuff on the way from Sheen right now. Ain't nothing wrong with Sheen. If you go order your clothes from Sheen, you can you can have dinner at the Cheesecake Factory, okay? Okay, <laughs> exactly. And that's probably where your dress came from. No, nothing wrong with it. They're like almost monopolizing a lot of things in this article. Oh yeah, they're being people try to sue them. They're under investigation now. There was a documentary mm-hmm. on Dateline the other night about that. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. All right. All right. So the next one is, and then we'll wrap it up. His uh-huh. charm goes away. Sadly, gold diggers are unusually cool, suave, and great at talking to women. He will always come off as charming in the beginning, but once he senses that you're invested and the relationship starts to get serious, the charm goes away, and he'll focus on spending money, specifically your money. He knows that once you're settled into the relationship, it's harder to walk away. This See? gives him plenty of time to go gold digging. If you suspect this is the case, trust your instincts if something seems amiss. It's hard out here for a pimp. It is. That's, that's, that's right. The last one, it is. straight pimp it is. from the book. Yeah. 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 For certain. Yeah. So, any, any who, that was it. Free me, Bob. All right, who got a final twist? Um, I don't have a final twist, but I want to say happy Halloween to everyone who participates. Okay. Happy Halloween, yeah. I got one. It don't have nothing to do with the topic, though. That's okay. So to all the drivers out there. Oi. Oh. 
if you're about to miss your exit or you're about to miss your turn, just take the next one. Take the <laughs> next exit. If you miss your right, make three lefts. That'll put you back on track. <laughs> Don't kill me and everybody else yeah. around me because you missed your turn. Okay. Because you missed your turn, uh-huh. or Don't you missed your exit. Yeah. I got you. People that do that, you're a real penis head. <laughs> <laughs> a penis head. You're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Driving tips with Tom so, Turner. Can we make that a new so segment. Polite. <laughs> so so polite. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, like, 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 it pissed me off. Like, a little penis head. <laughs> like, like, you want to come over three lanes to make this right when you could just go to the next light, three lefts, mm-hmm. and you're back on track. Mm-hmm. We all got GPS. Yeah, we all got cell phones, even if they the Obama phones. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Get your GPS popping. Yep, there you go. Rerouting. Get get, get used to that term. Mm-hmm. Rerouting. Mm-hmm. Heard mm-hmm. it many times. That poo poo. <laughs> you know what that sound? Poo poo. Yep. Like that. Yeah, I missed my turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Sure enough. You got one, babe? Uh, sure. I got one real quick. Um, for everybody out there that's that's dealing with any type of mental health issues, especially in our community, make sure you go out and get some help and talk to somebody because it's not it's not embarrassing. It's 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 getting strength. You know, I don't I don't I don't call things like I I, I say you need a, a mental strength coach. Mm-hmm. Get your get your get your uh your your, men, your mental strength up. So you know, get yourself a mental strength coach and uh, and deal with the things that you've been dealing with. And learn how to deal with the things you've been dealing with, yeah. or that you are dealing with, or that you could end up be dealing with in the future. I mean, even beyond you know working on coping st- skills and things of that nature, just having just having somebody to vent with mm-hmm. that's not biased mm-hmm. that that you yeah. can say things to and not they not be like, well, remember the time, mm-hmm. or that's all mm-hmm. your fault, you. you you just have somebody that you can talk to mm-hmm. and tell them exactly how you feel, yep. and their goal is to help you grow. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So works wonders. Yeah. The most important thing, one of the most important things you said, just it's not bias. Yeah. Very important. Very important. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I already posted this, but I just want to say, you know, if you're going through things, life is short. Let go, forgive, and move on. Yeah. Rest in peace, Matthew Perry. Um, and uh, my condolences to his family. Mm-hmm. Rest yeah. in peace, Richard Roundtree. Yeah, you know, uh, Ke- right. Richard Roundtree. Yeah. Oh, Richard Roundtree. That's well, Matthew Perry was dying last night. Yeah. yeah, but I was gonna say, you know, Keith Morrison from Dateline, that's his stepfather. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, and rest in peace, Richard Roundtree. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to get up out of here. We appreciate y'all hanging with us here on the 10-7 show with Tara, Tyra Goose, and myself. We're going to get up out of here. We're going to talk to y'all next week. Next week, not a holiday. I don't even know. I don't no. know if I'm coming or going. No, no next week the, is not a holiday. But the Eagles play at 4 o'clock, so we should be good. <laughs> we'll be part of Sorry, that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be like, wow. We are live. <laughs> My bad. We'll, we'll be partially good. We'll be good toward more good towards the end of the show than the beginning of the show. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all know how to go. We well, know. Right, though. Yep. Be we'll kind. Yep. Go birds. Go birds. Yeah. Go birds. Go He's birds. Out. She's gonna show me stuff to look at on the schedule like right now. Oh my <laughs> bad. I thought you were gonna end it. I am. Peace. Peace. <laughs>